Welcome to another edition of No Pressure, expert opinion on cardiovascular health. Today, ACCOR's Rick Ruffhead speaks with Dr. Lee Marcus from Preventive Cardiology of New York. Hi, Lee. Thanks for coming. Hi, Rick. Thanks for having me. I want to thank ACCOR for having me talk about an important subject today. Yeah, so how's it feel to be right there in the epicenter of all this right now? Well, you know, it's tough to be in New York, but one thing I noticed as an unfortunate consequence of an already terrible situation is that people are, as a preventive cardiologist, people are neglecting to keep up with their preventive care, whether it's cardiology, colonoscopies, regular physician physical visits. Uh, people need to re- recognize that uh, how important it is to maintain your preventive care regimens, which are should really be the the paradigm that people operate in. Pre- prevention is really the way to manage medicine going forward. Yes, I agree with that. Absolutely. So what are the physicians, uh, you know, the researchers believe that hypertension and hypertensive drugs have played a, a role implicated by COVID-19. Where do those drugs, you know, mix in with COVID? Well, you know, early on, it was recognized by scientists that the spike protein on the surface of the COVID-19 virus or the coronavirus binds to a receptor called ACE2, which is heavily involved in blood pressure and uh, thrombosis management in the lungs, the heart, various endothelial cells and epithelial cells around the body. So they found that we know that ACE inhibitors and ARBs, which are used to treat hypertension in a majority of patients, upregulate ACE2 receptors and COVID-19 infection downregulates ACE2 receptors in favor of angiotensin II. So it was hypothesized originally that uh, upregulating the ACE2 receptor may make one more susceptible to a severe infection with COVID-19 or more susceptible to contracting the virus. So they've made any recommendations to what patients should do that are taking ACE and ARBs? Yes, it's uh, a good question. Studies have come out, you know, there's a review in New England Journal of Medicine and in the Journal of American College of Cardiology, and in a more recent uh, study today, it actually just came out in the New England Journal, that, that have found that people who are on ACEs and ARBs are not more susceptible, it appears, to COVID-19 infections, and in fact may have a more benign course related to uh, the severity of the infection. So the societies are recommending, you know, American College of Cardiology, European Cardi- Cardi- uh, Society for Cardiology, and other society, professional societies that people continue with their doctor's uh, guidance, their ACEs and ARBs and renin angiotensin aldosterone system blockade if they're on that for blood pressure management this time. Right. So um, now that we see the morbidities and mortalities being so much heavier weighted towards the people with hypertension, um, what's your current recommendation for patients with hypertension? Well, you know, hypertension, uh, the, the, the current epidemic highlights something that we already knew is that hypertension is key to management uh, of cardiovascular risk and prevention of cardiovascular disease. Uh, as people may have heard, um, hypertension is the main risk factor for severity of COVID-19 infection, right. the others being cardi- coronary artery disease, diabetes. And um, I think it points to the fact that we need to really appropriately manage people with this really prevalent risk factor that kills more people worldwide than any other disease, hypertension. Right, right, yeah. And uh, how do you zone in on hypertension with your practice? I take a you know pretty uh, individualized approach to people with hypertension. I, I think one of the problems with managing hypertension currently is that we consider hypertension as one isolated phenotype where people have elevated blood pressure or, and uh, they're all sort of a uniform population of people. And we know that blood pressure is in fact linearly associated with uh, poor outcomes in respect, with respect to cardiovascular disease. So any systolic blood pressure above 115 measured brachially starts to linearly increase the risk of heart uh, disease and cardiovascular disease and stroke as you increase. However, within those cohorts of people that are in studied in large studies like SPRINT or uh, various other blood pressure studies, 
uh, there are people within those cohorts that don't respond to the treatment. And we need to really identify those people who are, don't have the physiology that fits into neatly into a specific phenotype of hypertension. Right. And so what clinically available tests do you use to do that? So, you know, in, in personalized medicine, which is a really hot topic now, one of the common things that people use is blood measures of pharmacogenomics, pharmacogenetics, epigenetics. But in hypertension, those are really at their infancy. So right. in hypertension, I like to look at measures of endothelial function, and I like to use measures of central blood pressure and blood pressure derivatives. Uh, and I use the Sphygma core to do that on all my patients because I think it's really the most effective way to manage hypertension in an era when, even before this COVID-19 era, but especially in this era where you don't have time to do trial and error blood pressure management, people aren't coming in for serial visits. So you want to be more granular from the beginning. Right. And, and uh, one, sorry to interrupt, Rick. No, it's fine. You know, it's, it's been shown in multiple studies, both invasively and, and then non-invasively with the sphygma core predominantly, that central blood pressure measurements and their derivatives are more closely associated with hard outcomes than brachial blood pressure measurements. Excellent. Yeah. Um, and you see any other future technologies and in, in, in the roles and how you're going to take care of patients in, with hypertension in the future? Um, I, I really see the Sphygma core becoming a uh, staple in people's practices once they overcome you know, the very uh, limited sort of uh, introduction to the product. Uh, mm -hmm. It's really easy to use. It provides complementary uh, information to brachial blood pressure, and it provides more granular information, as I said. Right. Yeah. It does give you a brachial blood pressure, so you can ease your way into transitioning one's practice to using central blood pressure, such as uh, augmentation pressure and augmentation index and arterial stiffness. And it's really a, a very easy technology and physiology to understand. And I think it benefits patients significantly in my practice of preventive cardiology. And do you think the recent outcomes or the recent problems with uh, COVID and hypertension, do you think that's going to change people's uh, beliefs on what go, moving forward with hypertension, that they'll pay more attention to it maybe? I would hope so, because um, hypertension, as I said earlier, is the leading risk factor for developing heart failure in the world and cardi coronary artery disease and coronary artery disease outcomes are far worse with people who have elevated central blood pressures, not so much as, e as closely associated with brachial blood pressures, which are, which are far more uh, general. Right. So I think it's going to be really important to manage hypertension appropriately, effectively, and try to use as uh, the the appropriate amount of medications without side effects that are cardiovascular related. Right. Really get them dialed in. That's great. Well, thanks, uh, Lee, for being here. Thanks for answering our questions and uh, keep our pressures low and hopefully no pressure. And uh, thank you again. And until we see each other in person, take care. Thank you, Rick. And thank you for having me. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for listening to No Pressure from Atcor, a cardiac company.